I'm going to talk about something today that I really shouldn't. I shouldn't really be giving this info out. A lot of coaches are probably going to DM me, tell me off for, for giving all this information away, but you know what? I want you to have this because it's super important that you do this before you do anything. So stop scrolling the internet for how to fix your wrist angles, how to fix all this other stuff, because if you don't have this one thing, nothing else is going to work. So let's dive into exactly what that thing is. Now that thing is our setup. Now before you run away, stay with me, stay with me. Because I know it's not a sexy subject, but I'm telling you right now that if you cancel out of this video and you exit your browser, trust me, everything else you do is going to be pointless. You see the best players in the world getting into really good setup positions before they even take the club away. The way that I like to explain how important setup is in our golf swing is imagine you're at home and you're inside and you've got a new flat screen TV, you've put in new down lights, all of that is fantastic. But what happens when the ground underneath or your foundation cracks? If that happens, it doesn't matter what's inside, it doesn't matter what color paint, how high your ceilings are, it doesn't matter about anything inside your house. If the foundation is cracking, you are going to have to bowl that house over and redo it all over again. And that's how I want you to think about your golf swing. Your setup is your foundation and the rest of the other stuff, the wrist angles, the elbow, the rotation, the ground forces, they're all nice stuff in the house. Nice big flat screen TVs, down lights, new carpets, all of that. So again, setup is your foundation. All the rest of it are nice things in the house. So let's cover off everything that I would look for in a setup position when working with a student. So let's just start with simply stance width. So when you're looking at stance width, basically I like to say for a mid iron that if you set up to the golf ball, you should be able to have about two of these club heads fit inside your feet, really simple. So we can see here there's one and two. You can't fit much more than that, maybe a fraction, but there's two club heads between my lead foot and this alignment stick. And as I always get wrong, I need to widen that foot a little bit. One and two. There's two club heads fitting beside or in between each foot. That's perfect stance width. The next thing I'm looking at is your ball position. So basically for a mid iron, we're going to be looking at somewhere around the middle of the stance. Okay, so when you set up to your golf ball, you can see there that that golf ball is roughly in the middle of the stance. I don't mind seeing it ever so slightly forward of center, um, only a tiny amount, okay, round, round about there maybe. Definitely don't wanna see it excessively back in the stance. Definitely don't wanna see it excessively forward in the stance. Now, of course, this is going to change depending on the club you're using. With longer irons, you would want it more forward. With driver, you're going to want it even more forward again. Maybe with wedges, you want it a little bit more back. Of course, if it's a windy day, you might put it even more back, but this is all situation dependent. But for a stock shot, we wanna keep everything roughly in the middle of the stance. The next thing we wanna look at is good posture. So essentially there's three types of posture. There's C posture, which is basically anyone who sits at a desk on a daily basis, which is a lot of people in the world, they have this big curvature of the upper spine. So when we're looking to get into posture, I want you to bend from the pelvis. So when we look at C posture, we're not bending from the pelvis, we're bending from the, the upper back and we're rounding our shoulders. This is really going to affect how you move. The other posture is what we call S posture. Now that's typically someone's sometimes being told to get into athletic posture. And what ends up happening is they stick their backside out and they have this, this real big arch in their lower back here. So that's what we would consider S posture. And again, that's going to be difficult to move as well. So when getting into posture, all we're looking to do in a really simple way that I like to explain it is try and touch your toes. That's how I would like you to bend forward from the pelvis. So if I just drop that golf club and I say, let's stand up and let's just bend down and touch your toes. Well, this would mean that I would have to forward bend from the pelvis. So as I go down to touch my toes, I'm going to see that I'm forward bending. I'm not going to bend down or try to touch my toes with that kind of posture. And I'm also not going to try and touch my toes with that kind of posture. 
So I want to have some forward bend, about 45 degrees of the spine, and then you're going to see that I'm in pretty good posture. So if you stood up straight, obviously you can see I'm dead straight. And we don't want to quite get to where, say like Michelle Wee bends over for her putting, which is, I'm going to try and do this and not injure myself, to about there. That's pretty hard for me to do. So we want to go somewhere in between there, which is going to be pretty good posture. So that's going to be our, our posture. And the one thing that good posture will give you is if you hang your arms down nice and naturally, you can see that my arms are just hanging directly down from my shoulders. I'm not having my arms out here. My arms aren't close into me. They're just hanging naturally down uh, from my shoulders, which moves us into the next part of the, the setup routine that we're going to go through. The next part we're going to talk about is our balance points. Now balance points is essentially where in the feet are you uh, having your balance points? Where, where in the feet are your pressures? So you can either have them too much in the toes, too much in the heels, or into say like the balls of the, uh, the feet or, or in the midfoot. So essentially, if I'm too much in the toes, you're going to see that I've got way too much of my body over where the golf ball would be. And you can also see here that my, my heels are off the ground. If I get too much into my heels, you're going to see that my toes lift off the ground. And typically this is a very common setup routine whereby people are in their, toe, uh, in their heels, their backside's a little bit too far back, the arms are way too close to them, and the handle position is really low. Or people can have the handle position really far upwards as well. So what we want to try and do is get into the midfoot. Now a really good exercise here is to literally try and feel like you get into your toes, that will lift your heels, get into your heels, that'll lift, lift your toes, and then get somewhere in between. And I like to just rock back and forth to find that, that in-between spot where I can't lift either my toes or my heels, and that puts me in a pretty good setup position. Again, it allows for me to just hang the arms down, and a real key to this is to line up my armpits tips of the knees and the balls of my feet. So when I'm setting up to the ball, you'll notice that very, very close to having my armpits, knees and balls of the feet all lined up. And this will allow me to get into my posture really, really nicely. Arms are hanging down really well and this will get me moving in a really good fashion. Now the last thing we want to talk about when it comes to our setup is our body tilts and our pressures. Now what I mean by that is, should you be tilting on the back foot? Should you be leaning back this way? Should you be on the front foot? Should your head be in front of the golf ball? That's what we talk about when it comes to our pressures and our tilts. Now here's one way to find out if you're in a really good setup position regarding your, your pressures and your tilts. I've got a double alignment stick right here. So I've basically got two alignment sticks. That's one alignment stick and that's two alignment sticks. And I've just kind of electrical taped them together. And what I use this for is, let's say I've got my ball position right there. I'm going to put this stick right in the middle there so that you can see exactly what my body tilts are like. So if I put that right in the middle, that should be pretty much in the middle of the camera frame. And you're going to see that when I stand up, basically straight up and down, you're going to see that my nose, my sternum and my pelvis, the middle of my pelvis are in line with this stick. Now, what I see a lot of the time with golfers is they actually set up a little bit too far ahead of it. Now, what this is going to cause you to do, and I think most of the time players set up to this because they want their low point forward, but believe it or not, it's actually the opposite as to what's going to happen. So when a golfer sets up too far in front of the stick, they might take the club to the top, stack too much pressure on their front foot, and then in a bid to get back down to the golf ball, they cast the golf club because the brain and the body knows it's already too far forward. So what ends up happening is we end up casting the golf club. Now, obviously we don't want that to happen. So what we want to do here is I like to set up with, I like to think of it like this. The middle of my pelvis should move one inch forward and the middle of my chest should move one inch back. And this will move my head position slightly behind the golf ball. So if I do that, lower body forward, upper body slightly back, what I can feel happened was uh, I've got 60% of my pressure on this lead foot 
Again, my upper body tilts back ever so slightly. This allows me to have some shaft lean at impact. And you can see that that alignment stick is kind of opposite my left eye there, my lead eye. And there's my setup position. So we can see there from a down the line view that stance is pretty good. My balance points are good. My posture is good. And from a face on view, we can see that my, my pressures and my tilts are in a pretty good spot. And this gives me a really good opportunity to go ahead and hit the golf ball. So there you have it. That is something that I know a lot of coaches won't like me doing in one video because it's kind of our coach's secret source to get students on the right track. Once you've got all those setup fundamentals, you're basically good to go to work on your takeaway, to work on the top of the backswing, to work on the downswing. But if any of those setup principles are out of place, it's going to make it very, very difficult to start moving appropriately and to get those club uh, movements or club positions in the right spot. Now, if you're wondering, what about driver? What about fairway wood? What about our long irons? What about chipping, pitching, putting? How do we set up to all of those skills? Well, believe it or not, I've got all of that information inside my Golf Academy. It's online. Anyone in the world can access it. It's on the screen right now. Check it out. You'll have all of that at a click of a button.